Hey mate, and welcome back to Tectonica with me, Jitty. Here in our last episode, we hooked up the new smelting and we semi-automated it with a little bit of fuel. We also automated science and fed it into a grant science tower and we raided a warehouse. And then we had to go back for the filter inserters. Yeah, I sort of missed them. But it's all right, we picked them up and then um, after the episode was done, I came back here and I re-automated fuel with a little bit of a better way of doing things. But today, today, I want to do a few things. Um, we've still got hand cranks and hand cranks are fine. That's, that's the technology we have available right now. We have a way to automate it later, um, but for right now, I need to keep cranking them. Now, that is a option. It's a perfectly fine option. But what I'd really like to do is I'd like to get in a whole lot of accumulators. Now, accumulators, we could get up and running. We could get up and running fairly easily. And once they're up and running, we could have more power stored, which means rather than me having to crank this every five minutes and then maybe having a couple of minutes of downtime where we're running on accumulator power, if I could fill out this whole room with accumulators, then I might have 10, 15, 20 minutes worth of accumulator charge to keep things running. Also, we're going to need accumulators in the future. I'm just, just going to key you in here because, well, I streamed Tectonica on the weekend. Uh, on the weekend, I went over to Twitch and I did a multiplayer with two of my mods and we made good progress. And we also found out that um, accumulators are going to need to be needed for science. Not actually as part of the recipe, but you need to have a certain amount of accumulator charge. So highly recommend you get some accumulators up and running early and that's what we're going to be doing. Now to do that, we need to do a couple of things. First off, technology wise, we need to actually unlock them. So once they've been unlocked, Task inbound. thank you. Accumulator stores electrical power for delayed distribution. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, we also have a quest on the left hand side. Uh, Use an assembler to craft and place unknown na number of accumulators on the floor, which we need to do. Actually, in fact, I have F6, please. I have a couple of accumulators that we found in the loot boxes. There we go. A little bit more charge. We now have what? 120, 120 megajoules. And the biggest time we have a power spike is when that thing runs. Yep, the, uh, well, the orb platform, which I went and cleared some area. I went and cleared some area. Um, hopefully it hasn't hit the ceiling yet. Give it time, give it time. All right, so a couple of things I want to do. I want to automate those. To automate those, we're going to need uh, that one. I need to get Kindervine Extract. Now, Kindervine Extract comes from our threshers. So we're going to need to get a, uh, well, a planter. So we can start planting plants. Also, we need to get some threshers so we can beat the plants up. Uh, as you may notice that this uses 50 kilowatts worth of power and that uses 200 kilowatts worth of power. They're a little bit power expensive. Hence why we're going to want to um, start conv converting some material into... Uh, into accumulators so we have a little bit more charge we're probably also going to need to put out down some crank generators but before i do any of that uh the first thing i want to do is i want to move this i'm sort of this got thrown down where it got thrown down and i'm thinking it could probably go over here uh also means do i have floors on me i do have floors on me uh also means that i want to drag out this sort of as far as i possibly can uh which is really handy because when i do that all the biomass that was on the ground ends up my pocket. Uh, 2,000. Cool. I don't have enough floors to do that. Uh, we can do that bit, and we can do that bit. Cool. Uh, can I remove one of those? Alright. Where are floors? Can we grab some floors? Do... No, no. Let me move this first. Uh, lights, lights, lights. Five. Lights! Yeah, that way they'll get my way in the future. All right, let me... Now we've got a bit, bit of clear space. Let me re-automate this over there out of the way. And at the same time, rather than having these boxes we we have to feed, let's actually hook it up and automate it properly. So um, give me a sec to just get that done. All right, so with the new fuel production in, it, it's sort of overbuilt. It's sort of over, overbuilt an awful lot. We have, um, well, this box for all the biomass because there's an awful lot of biomass. And I have this box for all the limestone. And again, there's an awful lot of limestone. This has six longhand inserters. This has also six longhand inserters. And we're not quite saturating the belt, but it's pretty close to. Also, rather than having one machine, I now have two machines running. And they're outputting um, all the fuel into one box, which is then traveling its way over here. And then, can I get a light, please? Yeah, more lights. Always more lights. Uh, bring the fuel over to here. 
and into our copper and I have been asked, I've been asked, do the resources run out? And the answer is yes, sort of. Um, as we can see, the mines do extend, the miners do extend out their teeth as they dig through the material. And um, this one is searching for more copper. Can I remove that, remove that, remove that, remove that, remove that, and can I set you wrong building? I want to set you in, uh, you have fuel there. I want you there. I want a long hand inserter there. I, just, just a single belt, please. And no, into there. And then can I get a long and a long? Yep. Uh, they'll dig forward the material that's in front of them. And now, at the moment, uh, he's obviously not outputting any copper. So he's digging through, well, rock. Let's go with rock. Uh, whereas these guys are at least digging through and finding copper and popping out copper. So at the moment, he's just going to dig through until he hits copper or nothing and ends up fully extended. This one I uh, already used to clear out some of the floor and he's hit limestone. So at least I have a limestone source if I need a limestone source. So far, I don't. Uh, now, next thing we need to do is, well, in theory, I need to upgrade the terminal. Now, to upgrade the terminal, I need to have iron ingots and copper ingots. Uh, iron ingots and copper ingots, I have put in these buffer boxes. And we see I am buffering up a little bit of copper, but the iron is not doing nearly as well. It's now got automated fuel. We have four smelters running flat out. Uh, but what's actually happening is we're oversaturating the belt. We can't actually get any more iron ore onto the belts, which means we're running about three smelters. Um, then the fourth one doesn't run full time and therefore the box doesn't fill up. So obviously when we start consuming less, i.e. when I lock off more slots, yeah, you, really? When I lock off more slots and these boxes fill up, we'll start consuming less iron. Like. It turns that insert a stack to 250 per stack. That's an awful lot. Longhand inserters, I don't think we're going to get to 250, at least not now. Uh, belt stack to 500. I think that's a reasonable amount of belts. Uh, hand crank needs to be hand cranked. Um, so yeah, I need to go find more resources. To go find more resources, I'm actually going to duck over to the old base and go grab what we can from there. Yeah, so that's going to be the next plan. And then hopefully we'll get into threshers. Threshers are going to be today's big plan. Big plan, big objective. We've been, we've gone, and uh, I went and grabbed the, the resources from the other, well, the other base, the original base, and we have uh, 1,000, 1,500 iron and 1,500 and a bit copper. Uh, not enough to do the upgrade because that's 2,400 parts. Also, we need plant matter frames. Now, plant matter frames, uh, these ones, require plant matter fiber which comes from a raw material. It comes from um, the threshers, the threshers, the threshers that are beating the crap out of the plants, which is why um, we need to do the planting today. The other thing I have is I have an X here. I have an X here that's saying um, bad things have happened. And what's actually happened is it can't insert any more, any more science fears. Um, we've hit the roof. We've hit the roof. Now I have a couple of options. We, we could, by all means, pop in here and we could, well, climb back up and remove more of the roof, but eventually they get to maximum size and then you need to put in, well, another core composer. Our other option is, hey, there we go, uh, tree complete, cores, 380 nanometers, we have 61 in this building. Now, I can put an inserter here and we can pull out all 61. Um, you now have 60, yep, in the bottom left-hand corner, it now says 60. My second option, which is actually my preferred option, uh, is if you're now stuck in the ceiling, then obviously, the ceiling is now weight bearing. So I'm gonna intentionally remove this, yep. And we're gonna have this little bit of extra area for factory space. Now, obviously that gives me a new problem that we're not inserting science. Now, science wise, we have 316, which is good because I would really like to, well, re-unlock that. Uh, I would really like to unlock the fast inserter, but I also want to unlock pack size and, well, uh, I'd like to unlock that and that so we can actually unresearch things. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple of things I'd like to do. But um, what I want to do is we're going to go to box with floors, which is now full, which means my iron is finally backing up. Not really, because I just removed a whole bunch of stuff from there. Uh, seven, please. Can we just um, extend the floor out from there to... Uh, am I? No, I'm hovering. I'm gonna say, I'm not walking on an invisible floor, am I? 
Uh, yep, yeah, that removes the left frame, right? Uh, and then, can I just extend this out to... Uh, insufficient resources, really? Oh, because it's counting them up twice. Uh, even though the other ones existed. Okay. Uh, 160? Can I... Wh where's 160 get me? 160 gets me through to about here. That seems pretty good. That seems to have a nice tall ceiling. Uh, can I put my core composer... Where are you? Uh, F6, please? Yeah, can I put my core composer, like, here? And then we're just going to go find out... I really hope that bug is fixed real soon. Yeah. Uh, by the way, people have asked, people have asked, my thoughts on the game. Uh, well, look, I can tell you some basic facts. The basic facts are the game releases in a day, a day and a bit, uh, which means this is probably going to be my last episode before the game actually comes out. Uh, when the game comes out, it's coming out at $30. That's 30 US dollars. Let's just talk US dollars. I know I'm Australian. I know I should do things Australian dollars. I don't, but it's US dollars. All right. 30 US. Now, for your 30 US, uh, you'll get a copy of the game, which is going on sale at the launch with a 15% discount, I want to say. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure that's right, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so it is going to have... Oh, that's not what I want. Uh, it is going to have a launch discount. So... Yes. I don't know if that helps influence your decision. Oh, God, there's 700 of them. We'll throw the blue ones in there, too. Uh, it is going to have a launch discount. Um, my thoughts on the game is it's enjoyable. It is enjoyable. I am enjoying playing it. I am interested in the storyline. The devs have kindly, very kindly, as part of uh, me having pre-early access. Please do as you're told. Okay, you go there. Can I now get you to plug in? Really? All right, fine. Be stubborn. Uh, that thud in the background is you working. Um, can I get a long boy? A long boy. Oh, you're a tall too close anyway. Uh, and a long boy and a long boy. Actually, we don't need that because... This is our input. Our input is incredibly slow. Uh, that'll do. This is where I wanted the faster inserters. Uh, there and now. And, whoop. There and there. Uh, okay. Can I throw that in there? Um, yes. It has a storyline. The devs have asked me not to expose too much of the storyline prior to the release. We, 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 if we continue with the series, we're planning to continue with the series. Uh, as long as you guys are enjoying the series, we're planning to continue with the series. Uh, well, then we can get more into the storyline. Uh, but they've just asked me prior to release, please, please don't, please don't. So I'm, that's, I'm fine with that. Um, I, no, I'm enjoying the game. I'm enjoying the game. It is a handcrafted map. And that's always a concern when it comes to games like this. Um, with a handcrafted map, how much replayability there is, and then my question would be, have you heard of this small game called Satisfactory that also has a handcrafted map uh, that people have been playing for multiple updates now? Um, if you enjoy Satisfactory, you will enjoy this. That's sort of how I'd look at it. Uh, I want electric components, and then I want copper wire. Uh, yeah, if you're enjoying one, you'll probably enjoy the other. Uh, I I enjoy playing Satisfactory, always have. The catch is, well, I played it enough, I know how the map works, I know where all the resources are, so consequently, I know what I'm going to get before I before I get there. Uh, so it's a game that I play sparingly, is probably the best way, best way of putting it. Uh, I don't need you. Uh, I also don't need you. I need a long guy. Cool. Um... So it is a game I play a little bit more sparingly, just because, well, I, I've i played the map. I've played the map, I've played the map a fair bit. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. As for this one, well, like I said, it has a storyline. We haven't even got into that. The building underground is definitely different. I, it's very dark. 
we should point that out. It's very, very dark. Lights are obviously a requirement. Normally, in most other games, I don't bother with lights. Uh, things tend to have enough light as is, but here it seems like it's very, very much a requirement. Um, so I've found that I tend to spam these down fairly regularly. Uh, speaking regularly, can we throw another one in there? Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't go as far as recommending it. Recommending it is, I, I feel, too strong a word because it really comes down to each individual person and um, your thoughts as to, well, your impressions from the game that you've seen so far. Um, there are very, very, very few games I recommend. Is it worth 30 bucks? I'd say yes. Let's put it that way. I'd say it's worth 30 bucks. Uh, it's definitely worth, well, 30 bucks minus the 15% discount. What's that? 27, 20, whatever, 26. Uh, oh, can I crank that shaft? And then let's go pick up the other shaft and bring it over here. Um, yeah, it, it's a game I definitely want to play more of. And it's probably a game that, well, I'm going to play and then I'm going to finish the game or finish whatever content's in it now, much like Satisfactory which I played in update one and then update two and then update three? No, update two added pipes. Whichever one added pipes. I, that was that was my last time I, I really got into it. And then I didn't touch it till update five, I wanna say, when they added more clipping or, well, they loosened up the rules for clipping, at which point we had a thoroughly fun time um, clipping everything. Uh, then from there, I, I didn't touch it again until they added blueprints. We tried out for a couple of hours, and then I, I haven't gone back to it since. I know what happens with Satisfactory. I follow the game. I follow the devs. Um, I said goodbye to Jace before he left, but yeah, I haven't really um really played it regularly since. All right, uh, with that out of the way, that's that's where I stand on, um, well, well, Tectonica, and there you go, Satisfactory at the same time. All right. We have a floor. I need to talk about a floor very quickly. Um, my thoughts on floors, because you're going to end up building multi-level in this game. There's definitely going to be a thing. Uh, number seven, please. All right. Uh, I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then at floor number nine, that is where I've put in the next floor. So I have eight tiles between uh, one and the next. And this is done for a number of reasons. One, if I double tap space, with our jetpack, that's about eye level. Okay, that is right on eye level. It's maybe just one tile above eye level, uh, which I found seems to be about a good height. On top of that, especially if I extend this out just a little bit, uh, if you stand on an assembler and then jetpack up, you can walk up to the next level. It means you don't have to worry about stairs. Uh, it does simplify things a little bit. Uh, can I get that one, please? Um, so it does simplify things a little bit, by, um, well, being able to just step up from an assembler rather than having to have dedicated ramps going up and down. So this is going to be our floor. We're going to intentionally build a new floor and I want to build, well, threshers up here because uh, threshers, like I said, are going to be very, very important. I have, okay, I have filter inserters. We have inserters. I have assemblers. I have threshers. I have planters. Uh, I want two more threshers. I do need to automate them. Don't, don't start on me. I know I do. Uh, it's fine. We will get around to automating them in the future. All right. How do thre uh, threshers and planters work? Uh, very good question. Very good question. I'm going to put in two planters. Now, a planter takes in a seed type. Now, we have Kindlevine seed in the yellow version and also silver, silver thorn seed blue. Uh, they're the plants that we've seen out and about. Um, I think I've collected them all from here. Uh... Yeah, I've gone and collected them all. Um, they're the yellow plants that we've been picking up for a while now. Okay. Cool. Can I go back up? All right. There's also a blue variant, uh, which we have also collected. Yeah, can I go to here and then land and then up on top? Cool. What we do is we throw the seeds into a planter. Now, I need to stress this an awful lot when you get this far. Planters use 50 kilowatts each. They're fairly power intensive. Also, the threshers use 200 kilowatts each. Even more power intensive. Uh, now, what we want to do is we want to automate this. So we're going to put in our seeds. Uh, we're going to move our light over by a tile. And we're going to automate seeds coming in from here. Now, where are we going to get our seeds from? We're going to get our seeds from our threshers. Our threshers are, will beat the crap out of the plants to get the seeds out of them. So we're going to put in a thresher here. Now, the thresher is going to take in our plants uh, with a long hand inserter. Yeah, and bring this to that tile. Thank you. Uh, two normal inserters. All right, so 
you're going to grow plants at a rate. Doesn't matter what the rate is, it's just going to grow at a rate. And for the yellow ones, it seems to be a two to one. Okay. Now you are going to need a filter inserter out because you're going to actually output multiple items. The only item I want to be taking out this side is going to be the seeds. The other thing I'd really like to do is them eight, please. Uh, I would like to put about six seeds on this belt. Okay. Uh, the ratio is perfect. Every every single plant that comes out comes with a seed that then goes back to the system. But I'd like to have a little bit of a buffer because this insert is going to grab a seed and I'd like him to be preloaded with a seed ready to go. This guy is also going to grab a seed and I'd like him to be preloaded with a seed ready to go. And if I have about six on here, it means the last couple of tiles of this belt are already preloaded with a seed, which means you're now done. Uh, cool. Which means that it's just going to have a slightly higher uptime because when seeds come out, hopefully they'll back up just a little bit that this guy can grab, grab them regularly. As long as you have a couple of extra seeds on the line, everything will be fine. Now, when you get a plant in, which is going to take a minute, uh, a, a minute, yep, you're going to beat the crap out of it. When you've beaten the crap out of it, you're going to output some materials. Uh, and we're going to need to put filter inserters on this because I want to get only one type of material out. Uh, I also need to put that material into another thresher that we can beat the crap out of a second time. Hey, look, we've got little plants coming out. And you are going to give us two different inputs. So you're going to have a Kindle vine, which is going to give us one seed and then four lots of sticks. Threshing initiated. Be advised that all generated outputs must be relieved for production without disruption. I don't let it back up. No, that one. Uh, and that one. Okay. So, we're going to have our sticks come out. Sticks are going to be very, very important. They're going to come around to here. Uh, in here, we can use a fast inserter if you want, or you can use a filter inserter. They run at the exact same speed. Uh, but we're going to make sure that the sticks go in here. Now, when the sticks go in, we get in four Kindle Vine Extract and four Plant Matter Fibre. Now, the Kindle Vine Extract needs to go into our accumulators. So this is what we've been trying to get to. We've been trying to get accumulators up and running. They need Kindle Vine Extract. I have some of that in my pocket, but obviously I'd like more. On top of that, uh, they'll need electrical components and copper frames. We'll work out those in a little bit. As for the uh, plant matter fiber, we need to do a couple of things with that. One, it needs to go into plant matter frames. Plant matter frames we're going to use in the future for a couple of other things. They can also be used as fuel, I think. I think. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can take plant matter fiber and turn it to plant matter. Now, if we turn it to plant matter, well, one, we can get rid of it. Uh, and it can go into this system. So, oh, there goes the lights. Yeah, this is why we put in a whole bunch of these guys. So now when I crank it, there's lots of power. If only I had more accumulators. Yes. All right. So what we want to do is we want to automate this and I want to automate this. I want to automate this a lot. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, uh, no, I'm going to put in our you and you and you and you and you and you all right here we're going to bring out our plant matter fiber okay out these three so our hay bales are going to come out here our hay bales are going to come up across and off that way all right over here we're going to bring out the little lava piles uh one two and three of them okay this is going to come this way and this way and then it's going to actually pop out one more tile uh, and then I need to go get more flooring. Flooring! That box, please. Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. Actually, can I just fly straight back up? That would be awesome. Alright, can I... Number seven. Uh, we just want to extend the floor out. So now I'm going to end up going down anyway. Yeah, in line with my head's fine. I don't mind. Oh, I mind that even better. Oh, nice. We're already up. Uh, can I extend that over to that corner? And then we can we remove a tile as you do to get the force to actually line up. All right. This will get us to here. So we have our two core components out of our threshing process. Uh, now, we need to run those into different production lines. And I'm going to do that. But by the same token, uh, our plant matter frames have a three-second crafting and they're going to need three plant matter 
our plant matter itself has a 0.7 second crafting time and needs three plant matter fiber. So that's gonna be super, super fast. The idea is, well, any material that goes into that craft just gets deleted. Like, it, it's just gone. We don't have to worry about it ever again. Uh, I might have too much stuff in my inventory. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna double this whole build, okay? So we're gonna put in, uh, lining things up with the previous build, two of those, uh, plus we're gonna go over to our thresher. We're gonna put our first thresher in, lined up on the left-hand side, and then our next one right beside that. We're gonna put in our belt for our seeds here to here. We input, input, uh, filter inserter, output. You're gonna be doing seeds. I need to preload you and preload you and also put in another box. Uh, yeah, and no, that's not what I wanted. Another box. Uh, can I do one, two, three, four, five, six? That should do us. And that'll take a second to load up. All right. Once that's done, we're going to need a longhand inserter, longhand inserter to bring this material through to here, which then goes, no, I need that to rotate. Yep. Uh, goes in there, in there. And then we're going to bring out our sticks, uh, fil filter inserters, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. You're gonna be doing sticks and st sticks and sticks and sticks and sticks. I don't think I actually need this many sticky inserters. Considering we only have two for input, we probably only need two for output. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, at the end of the day, our biggest problem we're gonna have with a lot of these setups is actually our belt throughput speed. Our belt throughput speed is incredibly slow at this point. We do have faster belt coming along eventually, but it's a not right here, right now situation. Um, also with the faster belt will also become faster machines. I have no idea if we get faster inserters, because that's also a concern. Uh, a lot of our inserters are, no, wrong way. Uh, there, there, and uh, rotate you around, yep. Uh, a lot of our inserters are too slow. Uh, oh look, just an, uh, almost the right amount of inserters. Okay, so you're gonna do lava, lava, and you'll do lava, and you'll do plant, plant matter, and plant matter, and plant matter. Okay, plant matter. Uh, we're gonna bring the plant matter down to here. Uh, we're gonna have you guys run this way into there. We're gonna bring the lava out and bring it over to that tile, and then bring lava over to here. All right, I need to get lava down to, well, production lines, yes. Uh, I want to make... Uh, I, I keep losing them. Accumulators. Uh, which needs copper frames plus electrical components. Electrical components uh, cost us uh, iron and copper wire. So we're going to need copper frames plus copper wire plus electrical components. And then we need the uh, actual kindle vine extract. And as you can see, it uses 20 of it. So it's gonna use a decent amount. So what we're gonna do is uh, remove that, remove that. We're gonna drag our iron this way. We're gonna drag our copper this way as well. We're going to plug that into there. Uh, we're gonna put in an assembler, uh, copper frames, and then electrical components. No. Accumulators. I need this in the middle. Uh, okay. Copper frames. Um, accumulators, which is going to need to move back at least a tile. And then we can do electric components and then do copper wire. Okay. So you're going to do copper frames. You'll do power just went out. Uh, you'll do the accumulators. You'll do uh, electric components, and then you're gonna do the wire, and you're gonna do cranky the shaft. All right, uh, we're gonna go in. You need iron, so that's that belt. Uh, you need that one, you need that one, you need that one, and you need that one, and then we're gonna bring Kindle Vine through here. So my Kindle extract, rather, is gonna come in here. Now I just need to get it from up there to down here. So, uh, fly on top of this, land. Come on, fly. 
Fly higher. There you go. All right. I need to get this down to here somewhere. So we're going to bring... Oh, I'm going to bring this off the edge. And I'm going to go out to three tiles. Three tiles. Then we're going to rotate. And can I fly it, please? So we get a sort of intermediate height. Uh, and then we're going to rotate again. We're going to come down another two. Rotate again. Down one. Rotate again. Down two. Oop. No. Q to go back. Down three. Yep. Rotate. Rotate. a whole lot of take two in a straight line and then rotate. And then rotate. And then rotate. Because now we're at the ground level. And then we... Uh, nope. That way. Okay. I'm going to have a nice little spiral for our extract to pop its way down here. All right. I need to work this out. So you and have to tuck underneath. So I can bring our extract into here, into here, and then it's actually going to spit out over the back. Because we're going to have to dispose of this. Uh, we can't have a situation where this backs up. It's just not allowed. We need to make sure that it keeps running. Uh, can I put you there? And I think you make six of those. And you make... Oh, you need 20. Never mind. Might need fast and setters, but um, actually, can we go? Oh god, it's got the X on it again. It's full already. It's full already. Oh, it's only got two, two too many. Okay, you, 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 you. Yeah, it's already got two too many, so it, it's full again. Um, we'll just stack those up. Okay, just pick that on the way past. All right. We're going to use a couple of our precious fast inserters. Actually, we could use filter inserters. Uh, filter inserters have the exact same transfer rate. Uh, did they go in my inventory? I did not. Sure, just hit the whole lot. Uh, where is, is it B for the data bank? It is B for the data bank. We have fast inserter has a cycles per, se uh, per minute of 37, and the filter inserter also has a cycles per minute of 37. Also, filter inserters is way cheaper to make. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll put a filter inserter here, a filter inserter here. We'll have you do that, and we'll have you do that, and we will run that belt over the top. Nope. And that belt over the top. All right. So that is you in theory running, possibly. Here, have a bunch of these and half of those. All right. I need you processing. I need to have some battery storage. All right. Next thing we need to do is we need to decide what to do with this stuff. Now, I can, uh, if dying, I can uh, have some of that in my inventory. Uh, I can shove that in a smelter. When I shove that in a smelter, I get limestone. Uh, limestone is very, very handy for dumping into this system. Uh, this system burns limestone. In fact, that is its main purpose. Its main purpose is it's out of limestone. And can I run that to there, please? And... Cool. Uh, I have a dump box for when I have too much limestone in my inventory from doing digging. And then I have two dedicated feed-in belts that bypass, well, they will saturate these belts uh, prior to the inserters getting a, hand, a chance to, which means I'm going to be taking this over to you. Yeah, it's sort of off by a little bit, but I'll take it for right now. Uh, and I want to there. Uh, can I get you to output output? Just doing the whole lot. And I can put that in that box to keep making fuel. Yep. And we'll have you run. How the hell am I gonna get you fuel? Uh, I have fuel there. I think for the moment we're going to go with take the fuel off the belt, rotate you, and run that to there for the moment. Just so it's semi automated for the moment. All right. I want to put in a smelter. This is what I want to do. This is going to be how we're going to get rid of whatever Kindle Vine extract is left over. We're just going to smelt it, which is F9. Uh, so I want to be able to grab fuel, which is going to come in from. Nope in from here. We're going to want to 
grab this. Uh, and I'm hoping with two of these it'll grab fast enough. Uh, you now have fuel. Actually, I can move you back a tile. Yeah, let's move you back a tile. Uh, and then we can put you in there. And then we can rotate that belt and put a belt there. And you need a couple of pieces. Looks like about two. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be making this reasonably quickly. So let's zigzag you back to here for now. And then we're just going to take a normal inserter and bring it out the front. Bring it over to here. And then I'm just going to side load it into that one. And that means any Kindle Vine that we can't use in this process will at least get burnt up and should go somewhere important. And I already have eight of those automated. Can I get you onto number six? And we can go dump these down in our little accumulator room. Now, we still haven't dealt with the other part of the process, the plant matter thingy. Um, so we also need to deal with that. Uh, F6, please. And our plan is just gonna be, we're just gonna fill out this room. In fact, we're probably gonna remove all the walls in this room. All signal deciphered. Ingress HA1976. Report to production terminal Victor for triangulation. Yes, boss. Can I finish this part first? Because this is the next thing I want to do. Uh, all right. So we have you planting, you threshing, you re-threshing, uh, you planting, you, th you, you planting, you planting, you threshing, you re-threshing. And then we have a bunch of this stuff left over. Now, this stuff I need to do something with. And we're going to be bringing you to here. That is a very interesting belt. Okay. Uh, all this plant matter. Uh, not this. This is this is done with. All right. All this plant matter. We need to do something with. Uh, we are going to probably handcrafting two of those. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running into a bunch of assemblers. Uh, like this. Okay. You are going to be making the plant matter frames. Okay. And you are going to be outputting. And I like giving myself the extra space by using longhand inserters. Here. So you're going to be making plant matter frames. On top of that, I'm going to want to have a second process we're going to be outputting, which is going to be... Uh, no, 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 no. I like giving myself lots of room by putting a longhand inserter. And that way I have extra room at the back to do things, or in front, or wherever it happens to be. You are going to be doing the second recipe, being plant matter. So... First off, I need to get resources in here. Resources in here, again, longhand inserters. Uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. This is important. We actually need this for a number of things. Well, the first one of them being uh, science. Except I have a belt going straight across and I need to get it fed into all these inserters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a little bit of a zigzag. Nothing too, nothing too crazy, just a tiny bit of a zigzag. No, yeah. And then R again, and then up one, R again, across one, R again, down one, and then up, whoop. Ah, thank you. All right, also, can I get a light? Mm, can I get a light in there? Can I get a light in there? And can I get a light in here? Throw one there, and we'll throw one there. All right, so you need, you need me to be closer. Uh, you need to have, uh, plant matter frames. You need to have six plant matter frames over three seconds. Gives me uh, plant matter frames out. So that's going to be step number one. I need plant matter frames. And we're going to take that to right here for the moment. And I'm going to put in one of my precious boxes. And that was the power going out. So now we're running on accumulator power. And I'm going to, for the moment, just get two of these little guys to pick up everything and put it in the box. Because I need to have... Nope, that was the actual power power going out crank. Alright, uh, there, to land, to double jump, there we go. Alright, so, that's step number one. Step number one, we're going to make a bunch of those, and they're going to go in the box for later. Uh, as long as we're feeding this at full speed, I am happy, okay? Supremely happy. Alright, next thing I want to do is I want to remove whatever resources we have left, okay? I don't want the threshers to back up, so we're going to shove everything else into this machine. And I'm going to remove that back. 
and we're going to do the exact same. So we're going to go in, uh, forward, and then that way, and then that way. Every single time you press SR on a tile, it will then allow you to do a twist or a turn. And then depending on which way you aim your mouse, depends on whether it goes left or right. So the R is not really the direction you're picking. It is uh, the R, when you press R on the keyboard is, this is the tile I would like you to be able to turn on and then go from there. And each time you press Q, it goes back one step. All right, so you should make plant matter. Uh, now you're gonna be outputting incredibly fast. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, first off, we're gonna bring this belt out to here. Uh, we're going to have you output and you output. Yep. And now I have four of you being able to output on one belt. And then I need to get rid of the plant matter. Uh, the plant matter, uh, actually, we're going to remove this, remove this, remove this, uh, remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this. All right. I am going to put a belt here. We're going to run all the way back to where we started. Uh, over to right where we started. Mm, maybe one more top. Out to here. Uh, and then down to there. After I get down to there, I'm going to fall through the hole. And we're going to put another spiral. So we're going to come forward two on the slope. Uh, press R. And then bring it towards me. Press R again after we've moved forward one top. We're going to come forward. Uh, one, two. Okay, hover so the... I'm not seeing a belt. One, two, three. Press R. Move forward a tile. Press R again. One, two, three, press R, move forward a tile, press R, move forward two more, press R, and when we get to the bottom, R, and then we're down at ground level. Okay, once I get to ground level, I need to see, decide what I want to do with this. Ideally, I want to feed it not through this box, but I want to bypass this box. So, we're going to bring in this. We're going to wrap it around, uh, over, and then into that top. That way, because there's already material on the belt, the inserter can't insert. So it instantly has priority. Uh, unfortunately, these guys are not running terribly well because we don't have any limestone. And uh, my easiest way to get more limestones, I go on a bit of a digging spree, which we'll probably be doing in the not too distant future. But providing this is running, yep, you have plant matter. Plant matter is going our way. Uh, these guys are outputting perfectly fine, being consumed as fast as they can. You have 500. Yep. Uh, you have 19 and can't output anymore. Uh, you have 500 as well and can't output anymore. And you also have 100. Yep. We've sort of maxed out the system. We need to either... Well, we need to clear the backlog. Uh... And the only way to do that is repair the belts, because uh, that'll definitely help. Wrong button, JD. Wrong button. There to there. Ooh. And then sprinkle in some lights. Often. Uh, there, there. Ah, uh, that'll maybe do me for now. And are you having an output problem? You have eight output currently. No, you're not having an output problem at all. So they're keeping up perfectly fine. We have a bunch of these stacking up and I should have enough material at the old base at least uh, to go and do, well, go and unlock the next level of that. Now, this we all did with the yellow plants, okay? Uh, the Kindle Vine. We also have the same with the Silver Thorn Vine. Silver Thorn, Silver Thorn. Yes, we have the same with the Silver Thorn, which we'll, we'll need to set up in the future. Uh, or it might magically happen between episodes. We will see. Meanwhile, accumulators are running. Uh, we have 16 of them, which means... Uh, oh, actually, the boss is standing right here. Crank that, because we're now up to 2.3 megawatts worth of power. Uh, we are burning an awful lot of power now. And if we pop over to here, and we throw in these... Uh, we had 120-ish uh, megajoules at the start of the episode. As long as you're on a power floor, you count. Uh, this is not a room we're ever going to be walking through, so I'm literally squeezing these in amongst all the existing structures wherever I can. And we will 
probably end up extending this room. That's it, we're all out. Uh, we now have 360 megajoules. So we have, what, three times the amount of power we had to start with. And as you can see, an awful lot is getting used by assemblers and threshers now. Also the filter inserters. The fast inserters are definitely not helping. Uh, but we should have enough power that at least for a couple of minutes, I can walk away and not have to crank a hand shaft. Uh, but hopefully the next episode, we'll find out what that uh, beacon is and go find out what we need to do next. Also, we're going to have to move that tower again. Um, yeah, we're going to have to move that tower. We'll just like extend the floor, you know, small extension. Seven hundred, eight hundred, fourteen hundred, and another thousand plant matter into the inventory. Uh, hey, put it in the hole. And put it in the hole. All right, that's it. I'm going to call it here for this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode with uh, more automation, uh, more production chains, and like I said, um, tell me down in the comments below. I'm curious. Are you looking at buying this game? I'm really, really looking, wondering, you know, how many people are actually looking at this, buying this game? How many people are going to put it off? Um, how many people are going to, you know, wait and see what happens with uh, different content creators? I'm curious to know your thoughts. Anyway, that is it. I am out as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do you hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the very next video. All right, bye.